The Necron homeworld is currently asleep. However, the Blood Angels are on their way and the tomb is just about to be awoken. Nick speaking, and welcome to this video. Right, and Warhammer 40,000 battery ports for you. Necrons versus Blood Angels. We're gonna be playing 1,700 points. Before we get going though, if you would like to keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40K, then please give me a sub and hit the bell button so you don't miss an upload. Right, okay, so today we're gonna to have a very friendly game between two friends playing with plastic toy soldiers. Absolutely no violence in this battle report, YouTube, just for reference. Right, okay, let's have a look first at the Necron army. Okay, so here we are, 1700 points of Necrons, and I have five models. Yes, uh, just experimenting. The main objective of this list is to play this guy here. So this is my Lord of War, Tesseret Vault. I then have the Spearhead Detachment. So we've got an Overlord in a command barge there. Uh, one monolith, two monoliths, and nine Lich Guard with a war size. And that makes my 1700 points. Let's have a look and see what the Blood Angels have brought this week. Okay, so this is the Blood Angels army. Uh, similar to the one before, but some modifications. So we now have a Land Raider Crusader, and uh, we've got eight vanguards in there. Hiding behind there is a Librarian and a Chaplain. We've then got the Sniper Squad of Scouts just here. Uh, and the other two squads of scouts have actually combated down. So there's two small squads just here behind the building. And then there's another squad just there and another one just there. They've just infiltrated. We've then got a standard um, dreadnought with auto cannons. And then we've got two last cannon auto cannon predators just there. And that's the entire Blood Angels force. So we've rolled off for a mission, we're playing Only War, we're playing uh, Slay and Secure, so four objectives, and then the Warlord, Slay the Warlord, is worth D3 points. And uh, I have currently deployed here, I've got my Vault and the Overlord in his barge just here. The barge is on top of one objective, the obje other objective is just behind me, and then the Blood Angels are on that objective just over there in the building, and the other objective is just over there. So two on each side this week. Right, uh, so we're gonna roll off to see who goes first. I, of course, get plus one for deploying just two models. Well, five models in total. Right, here we go. A six, he got a five, but it's still not enough. Didn't even need a plus one. Okay, here we go then. Necrons, turn one. Okay, so the Blood Angels have decided they're gonna have a go at seizing the initiative. Pretty disappointed they didn't get to go first, so they're hoping for the best. Oh. A two. It's close. It's very close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so definitely Necrons, turn one. Okay, so Necron turn one. Uh, move the vault and the barge forward and then deep strike in the two monoliths. No space left for me this time uh, with the scouts all uh, across the board. So um, I just moved up here at the front as you can see. Uh, and then we started shooting. So the three powers of the Catan did pretty much nothing. All three powers killed one scout. Uh, and then I shot the Tesseret Vault's um, spheres into the Lamb Raider, uh, just there, and I think I did one wound, and that was it. Uh, however, the two monoliths who shot all of their guns, both monoliths, at the Lamb Raider Crusader, um, and I've taken it down to eight wounds. So I did seven wounds in total. I have crippled it slightly. It's in the second uh, tier down, um, so it's going to reduce its movement, etc. But um, that was it. That was turn one for the Necrons. So let's see how well the Blood Angels can retaliate. Okay, so Blood Angels, turn one. Uh, the Crusader here just moved forward slightly, uh, didn't decide to get out this turn, decided to just concentrate on shooting, and shooting they did. They shot every single gun in the army at that monolith there. I weathered the storm, but only with two wounds left. 
To be fair, the last cannons weren't that great at getting the bullets out, but the ones that did hit, one of them did a damage of six, and the other one did a damage of five, plus all the other shots that came through. So the monolith is still there, but he's very crippled, uh, and is obviously going to go down at some point during the game. However, it's my turn, so let's find out what happens in the Necrons turn two. Okay, so Necrons turn two. I moved the monolith there on the left hand side slightly forward. It's fairly crippled, and I'm just trying to use it as a bit of blocking terrain um, and also get the guns in range. This monolith here, first of all, I got the Lich Guard out and then I moved it forward slightly. Uh, and then the Tesseret Vault. Uh, this time, the Catan decided uh, that he would wake up and uh, it used its Catan powers very well this time, damaging and actually taking out the Land Raider Crusader. The guys, well, they got quite wounded in the explosion, a couple of them died, and then I shot the rest of my guns into that unit, taking them right the way down to three guys left. Uh, so, in the end, with the Lich Guard, I decided it wasn't worth assaulting that unit, so I went for the Squishy unit instead. So I assaulted the Scouts instead, and I managed to wipe them out, and then I consolidated in the terrain next to that objective. So I think that was quite a wise assault move there. Uh, I did shoot a couple of guns from the vault into that front tank, and I managed to take a couple of wounds off of it. Um, and then that was it. So, we're going to now move on to Blood Angels, turn two. Okay, so Blood Angels, turn two. Uh, so, the main force here on this side of the table moved up over into the corner. Uh, mainly, I think, to try and get out of range of the Lich Guard and also to get a good target onto this monolith. The jump pack guys that were here with the chaplain and the librarian moved up into that piece of terrain heading towards that monolith there. Then they opened up fire, everything over there shooting into the monolith took me down to five wounds. The vault here lost one wound from a psychic power called Blood Boil and then it was time to assault uh, my monolith. So. They assaulted me, I managed to kill one in Overwatch, then they got into assault, there was three uh, vanguards there, all with storm shields, uh, so I rolled on the portal of exile, I'm, I needed a six because I'm badly wounded but only on three wounds, uh, so I chanced my arm, I used a command point, I re-rolled the dice, and what did I roll? A six, and then I rolled a five, I killed all three of those men. Uh, that was very useful. Just shows you sometimes you just got to chance your arm with those command points. Right, okay, so now we're going to move on to turn three for the Necrons. Okay, so there you go, Necron turn three. So this monolith, I just moved back slightly. He gained another wound back, so he's on four wounds. This monolith here uh, on six wounds just moved forward slightly. I left the Lich Guard where they were. I moved the Tesseret Vault trying to get uh, the HQs that were hanging around in the building the other side to be the closest target. Uh, I then started using the powers of the Catan. I managed to take uh, the scout unit out that was in this building just here. I was then free to start targeting the chaplain and the librarian, uh, which I managed to kill them both. Uh, just about uh, and then uh, in the end I had two of these spheres shooting in at that tank and I managed to take another wound off uh, no I didn't actually I did a wound but he saved it so still eight wounds left there and that was it so that was my turn three I've used all of my command points uh, so we're now moving into Blood Angels turn three they have five command points left and a reasonable amount of long range shooting let's see what happens as we continue with this game Okay, so turn three for the Blood Angels, and both monoliths have now fallen. They were very badly wounded. It was going to happen at some point. Uh, the tank, first of all, moved up to that objective, though, uh, and the less cannons and auto cannons just making mincemeat of the monoliths. Um, and indeed, the vault was also targeted, still had some shots left after the monoliths were gone, um, and I lost one wound on the vault. Uh, and that was it. The scouts at the back there just huddling on that piece of terrain. 
Uh, right, okay, so we're going to move in now to turn four for the Necrons. This game could be pretty close. Okay, so my turn four. Uh, the uh, command barge there shot in at that tank. I did nothing. I moved the vault uh, from here over there trying to uh, sort out this tank. I shot all of the guns at the tank. I did one point of damage with the three plus save. Um, in the end, uh, actually I did all of the um, powers of the Catan as well. I rolled a one for one power, and then I rolled a one for the other power, uh, and the next power I targeted the scouts and killed a scout. I ended up assaulting the tank, uh, and in the assault I did another wound, so that tank down to six wounds. Uh, the Lich Guard here just uh, surrounding the objective. As we move on to turn four for the Blood Angels. Okay, so turn four for the Blood Angels. So these scouts here came from behind the building, making an advance towards this objective. Uh, and then the scouts that were on that rock also moved and advanced forward, heading over towards this objective here. Uh, then the tank that I had locked in combat uh, moved away, so it couldn't shoot. Uh, however, the other tank and the Dread both shot into my vault, and I lost six wounds from that. Um, and that was the turn four for Blood Angels. So we're going to move into turn five. This will be the last turn in this game. Let's see what happens. Okay, so Necron turn five, my last turn. I can't do anything else, but will it be enough? So what did I do? I basically moved this guy that was there backwards onto this objective here, trying to keep out of range as much as possible of the long range last cannons, just in case the vault was taken out. I shot this gun into the scouts along with all three powers of the Catan and uh, managed to take the scouts out that were there. And then I shot all four of the spheres into the damaged uh, uh, last cannon predator and I got it down to two wounds so I've crippled it quite heavily it's going to be more difficult for it to move and shoot in the last turn uh, meanwhile the lich guard just huddled around that objective as much as possible and that's it so we're going to move in now to the blood angels turn five okay so that is it game over turn five for the Blood Angels, the Dread securing this objective and every other gun shot in at the vault. I actually did quite well that turn, got me down to 11 wounds, uh, but not enough to destroy it. Uh, and that is the end of the game. So the Blood Angels are holding this objective there for two points. I have this objective here for two points and of course this one right at the back for two points. I did also slay the Warlord which was D3 points which we haven't rolled because obviously it's irrelevant. So it is a Necron victory. Um, what a fantastic fun game that was. Really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the battle report. Uh, thank you for watching as always and I'll see you in the next video. Beam me up. <laughs>